Hey there. Uh, one of the inspirations kind of for this channel uh, was that a number of years ago, one of our engineers came uh, to me and uh, had a heat transfer problem to solve. He had come up with a relatively simple differential equation that described, uh, as I said, the heat, heat, heat transfer, heat flow in a problem, and wanted to know how, how to solve the equation. And um, while I was able to help him out, I was thinking um, that I don't think he had a compilers or even something like Python on his computer. But he did have Excel, and this problem could have easily been solved numerically in Excel. So what I wanted to do originally was that with this channel is to show how to solve these type of uh, relatively simple problems with, with a computer, be it with Python or Excel or some, some other tool. So what I wanted to do here is go over the uh, fourth order Runge Kutta algorithm, but I think before that, um, I would like to go back and do something even simpler called an Euler, um, Euler method, Euler, Euler algorithm, and then use that as a jumping off point into the uh, Runge Kutta. Now Euler is not really used a lot in practice, as, you're, as you'll see, uh, it works for some cases and has issues in other cases, but uh, Runge, Kutta, Runge Kutta is kind of like the workhorse algorithm for like ordinary differential equations. If you've used any of the MATLAB solvers, even the Python solve IVP solver, um, they default to fourth order Runge Kutta. So um, what I'm going to do is go through them in uh, Python, uh, just kind of code them up quickly, uh, both Euler and Runge Kutta, and then uh, jump over to Excel and do the same there. So having said all that, let's just uh, get into it. Okay, so at first I want to start off in a notebook, and this is basically the problem that um, my coworker was uh, working on. He needed to come up with a a uh, temperature profile for some object that was in contact via some thermal link to a fixed temperature surface. So I'm going to denote this as TW for T wall. So this is some, it could be an electronic component um, coupled by some thermal conductance to some heat sink here. So this, this temperature TW is fixed. There's some conductance uh, K, specific heat C, and the uh, temperature of the block is T. So if you work out the differential equation that describes that temperature change, you get something like this. And I know this can be solved by hand. What he was doing was a tiny bit more complicated, but not, not much. Um, so you have a, temp a differential equation. This is first order uh, equation uh, dt, d capital T, d temperature, d time, with some initial condition here. So so before we go on to uh, Runge Kutta, I want to just, want, just want to talk about the Euler method, and this is what I would have suggested to him. Um, so you have some sort of differential equation here that can be written in this form. So dy dt, some variable with respect to time, is given by some function here with some initial condition. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to advance each time step by some small amount h. And I'm going to use this notation um, rather than delta t because the uh, Wikipedia page uh, for both this algorithm and Runge Kutta uses h for the time step. So h is some small time step. So we're just going to advance from uh, our time t sub n uh, plus h is going to give us t sub n plus 1. And our update for the function is basically this. So you take your uh, function, your original function, your known point, and then you advance it by multiplying your time step times the derivative, and that is your subsequent point. And you just keep doing that repeatedly. So I just want to um, run this through the built-in solver, solver, which is actually a Runge Kutta algorithm uh, in SciPy. So this is the coding up of this function. Um, here it is, right? It re returns the derivative. It's a function of x and uh, y, or t and y. So our, our, our function has two uh, inputs, little uh, time and temperature. And I'm just going to hard code in the values for uh, the T wall, the, uh, the conductance and the heat capacity, a specific heat. They're in here. And this just returns that derivative. So let's just run that cell. And I call the self IVP uh, function from SciPy and I plot out the results. So plot. Okay, so it's a decaying exponential, which is what you'd expect. If you actually solve this by hand, you will get this. So what I'm going to do is come back up to this cell and I'm just going to create some arrays uh, where we could append our values. So time is equal to that. Um, our initial time, let's, let's set t equal to zero. And our initial temperature. Uh, let's call it capital T. Um, what I set it to up here, it was 30 degrees. Uh, yeah, right here, 30 degrees. 
So capital T is equal to 30. So uh, let's come down here and go time.append little t. Let's go temper temperature is equal to an empty list and we will do a temperature dot append capital T. Okay, let's move on now. So um, what I think I'm going to do is uh, set a value for H. So let's, uh, let's do it down here. So H is equal to 0 0.1. I'm going to use a while loop. You could use a for loop. So I'm going to say a while T is less than or equal to 1800, which is the uh, time end of, end of the integration up here. So 1800 seconds. We're going to use this update rule here. So our new temperature at, the, at that time step is equal to our old temperature plus H times our function. And what did I call that function? I called it heat equation. Heat equation. T. T. And now I update my time step. So little t is equal to little t plus h. And let's append uh, time.append t temperature dot append capital T. Run. Okay, it doesn't seem to be an issue. And now let's just overlay that those results on this plot down here. PLT.plot uh, time temperature. And let's just make these um, dots. So, 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 so obviously this does a pretty good job. It matches our original Runga prediction exactly. So the nice thing about Euler is that it can be done easily in Excel. So I've set up uh, two columns here, time, temperature, the parameters we need are H values. Um, this should be H and this is 0 0.1. So for example, we'd advance our time step by saying, um, what is this cell D2 plus that. So that's our next time step. And obviously we can drag this down to, to advance time. Uh, likewise, this uh, we could ad advance our uh, temperature by saying this is equal to the previous temperature. Uh, in this case, it's our derivative and it's minus because of the minus sign in that equation. Uh, minus our H again is uh, D2. And it's times uh, our K value, which is E2. E2 divided by our specific heat, which is F2. Uh, let's just make sure that kind of takes it. And then we subtract off, we multiply it times our temperature, which is here, minus uh, our wall temperature, which is G2. So G2, close parenthesis. Okay, so I fixed the typo here. Here's our formula. Here's our updated uh, temperature. And I also had set this to 30. And obviously, if this is 30, it's not going to uh, change temperatures at all because it's already in thermal equilibrium. So 20. And again, you just pull this down. And I'll do this. Okay, so I advanced my time out to 1800 seconds and plot it out here and you see we get the exact same thing we got on the, from the Python notebook. Okay, so if that works so well, why don't we use it all the time? Well, the issue is basically stability. You have to be a bit careful uh, when using it and just for a little bit of extra work, you can get the much more stable fourth order runge kutta algorithm. So as an example, let's look at the second order differential equation, a spring mass system where we take an M, a mass M, we displace it a little bit. Uh, and we will just let it oscillate back and forth. We'll assume no friction, so it's just a, a simple oscillation. Uh, from Newton's law, here's our equation, our, our force balances. Um, mass times acceleration is equal to kx minus kx. Um, we could rearrange this equation um, and come up with a, a solution here. I don't know why we I derived this, but because um, we're going to use a numerical solution anyways, but it can be solved by hand. So this is the actual equation of motion. And since our first, our, our differential equation solvers require first order equations, we can transform 
uh, this into a system of coupled first order equations. So obviously the velocity is the time derivative of position and the acceleration is the time derivative of velocity. So here is that coded up into a function. And again, I put the constants within, um, I hard coded the constants in here and it just returns these uh, two derivatives here, the position and velocity derivatives. So let me run that. And again, this is our solve IVP um, function from within SciPy. So I solve the equation and uh, plot the results here. So let me run that. As we expect, we basically get a cosine wave. So now let's just do a quick Euler integration of this and see what we get. So let's come down here. Uh, we will set our position X initially to two, which was our initial position set here. Um, our velocity V is initially zero. And let's also create, um, again, time position is equal to an empty array. Velocity is equal to an empty array. And let's append those values. So let us do this. Uh, time dot append. Oh, come on. Time dot append T. And we need to set our initial time equal to zero. Did I do that up here? No, I didn't. T is equal to zero. Likewise, let's append our initial position. X and our velocity. So velocity dot append V. What did I spell wrong? Velocity. Okay, that runs. And now we'll just do the same thing we did up above with a while loop. So while t is less than or equal to, what was our um, final time here? 12. Let's do 12 down here. And we're going to need a value of h again, won't we? So let's come down here and say h is equal to 0 0.1. So our next x is equal to x is equal to x plus let's actually calculate our function first to get out both derivatives. So let's um, ca uh, calculate f prime is equal to what did I call this uh, system? Just equations. T comma x. So this is equal to x plus h times f prime uh, f prime zero and velocity is equal to velocity plus h times f prime one and let's append those so um so what uh position that append x uh, velocity dot append V and T is equal to T plus H. Let's just make sure there are no typos. Uh, not iterable. Oh, um, this has to be a vector of, come on. takes position and velocity as a vector. So let's just see if that runs. Seems to. So let's actually plot out this uh, answer. So plt dot plot position, actually time and position. And we will use dots again. Same length of one. Uh, what happened? I never appended the time, did I? Time dot append t. So you can see there's a bit of an issue here. So let us um, extend this out farther in time. So it's a couple period. Let's make this, I don't know, 24. Come back down to our while loop. Where's our while loop? Here it is. Not so good. So that is what I mean by unstable. And you can make this a little bit better by cranking uh, down our step size. So if I decrease our step size h by an order of magnitude, it gets better. 
but still after a couple periods there's already substantial error. And there is a way to actually make this work. Let me go back here and make that uh, point one again. And that is to do our velocity update first. So I'm going to comment that out. Actually, I'm going to copy this line. Do our velocity update first. Paste that in. And I'm going to use uh, V instead of explicitly referring to the, uh, the derivative. So I probably should have run this before. I don't know if exactly if it'll work, but it should. So now we have a nice, nice match. But um, yeah, our basic Euler method kind of fails rather miserably here. So if I go back to way, the way it was, as a mean, as a matter, as a way to compare, yeah. So I don't think I'll do this in the uh, spreadsheet. It's it's pretty obvious how it's done. Um, you know, it's the same as the other thing. We're running a bit long here. Uh, surprise, surprise. I think we're already over like 17 minutes, and I'll probably edit this down to like. 15 or so. Um, so what I'm going to do is split it here and I will uh, um, upload the Runga Kota part as a second, uh, second chapter to this video. So until then, I will see you.